five, four, three, two. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Vineyard Church. How are you guys doing today? All right. It's good to see everybody. It really is. Good to see everybody. Why don't you go ahead and stand? We're going to start out with a few songs. Let's have some fun. Let's clap those hands. Let's sing nice and loud. All right. You guys ready? Come on. Let's do this. Come on. Let's get those hands together. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that? Give me a clear tighter shot on two. Of way. Two, give me that. Give me that. Pan up. It was my two. Okay, you're live on two. Till I met you. Come on, sing it out. I was breathing, but not. Alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn. Oh, Till I was on seven. Ten out on seven. Ready? Seven. All right, back two. One and two. Okay. Uh, give me uh, two on Barry. Much better than the other camera. Agreed? Okay, give me one on, uh, ready? Give me one on the girl on the left. Give me two on Matt. Actually, give me two on the girl to the right. Put seven on a guitar or something. Actually, hold on, hold off, hold off on that. Put one back on Matt. And I'm cutting to Matt. Okay, put seven on a guitar or something. Car well enough. Pull out, pull out. Ready on one. Come on, let's get him up. Okay, find something new for that for seven. All together, let's sing it loud. I knew it best. My sin was dead. Give me that guitar, yeah. And then get ready for a slow pan, and zoom in on three. Zoom in on three, ready? Zoom in on three. Zoom in on three, zoom in on three. Okay, six, two. Zoom in on three. Pull out on seven. Put, uh, pull out on seven, yeah. And get, put two on uh, Barry. I need something.
you are my hiding place. Zoom in on three. Actually, uh, never mind. Owl on three. Lights come up. Zoom in on three. Zoom in on three. Zoom in on three. Seven, I love that. Pull out on seven. Pull out on seven and pan down slightly. Excellent. That was great. Find something for seven. So you're always going to have to fix the pan to keep it framed up correctly because of the lyrics. At the end of the verse, I'll just switch it again. We're on back to two. Okay, find something for seven. You can't do that one because that mic stand. See, it works because this is dark and this is dark. I like seven. Can you pull? No, you can't pull out because that's uh, yeah, three is good. Pull out on seven. Pull out on seven. Okay, leave that one there in seven. Put one, no. Put one, two back on Barry. Okay, and put uh, three, I put one on the girl. No. Okay, now put two back on that. It broke a rule. I'm gonna put it on seven, put two back on the girl. On to the right. One is on. Zoom in on three. Uh, can you uh, do something with seven? Uh, put one back on that. Okay, I got it. So I'll change seven. One looks excellent. You pick one of those guys for seven. Okay, pull, that's good. Pull out on that one. Pull out on that one. Pull out on that one. That's good. And we're on an instrumental so you can kill the... Why is there no lyrics? The light. Oh, okay. I believe you are. Pushing on three. Come on! Do not stop! Right. Let's keep going! Let's have some Get ready to push on three. Fix seven. Matt, over on Matt. I you glory for all you brought me through. And Pushing on three. I'm ready. Uh, actually, pull out on two a little bit. Be careful because I'm alive. I'm moving forward. Okay, I'm going to cut to one. Okay, I'm now I'm ready. Zoom in on three. Whatever. 
Two, we're zooming on two. Seven, you can pull back on seven a little bit. Pan over to that guy on the guitar on seven. Pan down, pan down on his guitar a little bit. Perfect. Okay, now go give me a, a, a zoom on his guitar. Zoom down on, I'll pan down on Matt on one. Live on that one. And up on that a little bit. And get his head off. A little bit. Okay, move to seven. Pull back. Uh, pull back on seven a little bit. Pull back on seven. Back on two. Get her out of the lyrics, please. On two. It's hard when she jumps. No, that's good. Keep pulling out on two. Uh, get ready to give me. Uh, uh, okay, two uh, on Barry. Come on, Barry, give me something. There we go. Get ready to zoom on three. Zoom in. Go, 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 go. Okay, two, um, pull back a little bit. Uh, Maggie, yeah. Okay, I'm live on two. Seven, uh, seven finds on Newport. Okay, I'm gonna go live on seven. I've been live. Live on two. Can you pan that down on one? Never mind, it looks fine. Push on three. Push on Maggie on three. Put seven on Maggie. Live on seven. Oh crap. <laughs> Such a good shot, but there's feedback in the background from that screen. We want you, Lord, like never before. Just lift it up. Your presence is an open door. Is it possible to get in crowd shots? So come now, Lord, like never before. Yeah, I don't think it's possible because I pointed it pretty much straight ahead so we'd have full range of motion. Oh, your mighty presence, God. Uh, put, one on put one on Barry. Actually, put, yeah. Yeah, yeah, put you know seven what? on if Barry. You're ready for a breakthrough, let's all just stand together as believers. It's not by it faith, works. by sight. Zoom in. And our God can do all things. Yeah, humans can't, but our God can. Zoom in and so keep it on Barry. let's stand together. We're going to sing this out to him. You need it with me? Let's shout him out. Huh? Yes, we praise you. Oh, we welcome yeah, well. you. We worship you, God. We're ready for a breakthrough. Ha <laughs> ha. Just, above go. anything, just don't chop his head off. Some of them, some of them Live on seven. Live on two. Can you zoom out on seven? Pan down a little bit. Never mind, never mind. I'm panning. Yeah, 
pull on three. Pull on three, yeah. Can you give me a... Uh, can you give me a guitar or something on seven in a month? Uh, can you fix... Never mind. Pull, give me a, set, a guitar or something on seven. Pull back. Pull back. Okay, you're live on seven. Guitar on seven is great. Who's talking next? Yes, that's what it's all about. You know, God loves it when we have fun okay. in Him. He there wants us to enjoy on. us. So, Dad. I want you to turn to someone to your left, to your right, just say, so glad you're here today, and then you can have what? a seat. Can I cut the black on this? Yeah, you can. Okay, get ready to, do we have a video before he comes out? Okay, are you on him? On one, on one. Well, good morning, Vineyard. Hey, you know, um, you know, when we, we sing songs of worship to God, it's, it's all about God. But yeah, not that, the band, they do a phenomenal job. When this graphic goes away, we're going to cut to one. Ready? And many graphic of cut. them show up yeah. here at 7 a.m. to What's set all this up and get it ready and practice to prepare to lead all of us into worship. And so one more time, let's just give those guys a round of applause. Hey, I'm glad you're here. My name is Chris, I'm the lead pastor on, no? here at the Vineyard, and uh, we're gonna have a great day today. Why did I think this cut? Uh, if you're new with us, oh, we wanna no, say sorry. welcome to you. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, and uh, Can you pan seven over point, what to I would the last like little bit? everyone to do, on the way in, you got a program, and it okay, has a um, pen and a bunch of stuff One is our tight it. shot. Um, Get as tight as you can. So we're going to walk through this step by step. Okay. The first step is this. On the back, there's a little tear off. It says connect card. And if everyone will tear that off, it tears off very easily like that. Mine's not terribly neat, but Why did I if you fold it a that? couple times, it will. If you're a regular um, around here, just give us your name and maybe oh uh, an email address or phone number, something so we can track you down when we can't read your name. And then <laughs> for everyone else, if you're, if you're new with us, if you'd give us a little more information, your mailing address would be great. And here's the deal. We won't stalk you. We won't show up at your house. We just want to send you a thank you gift for coming. If you'll let us know uh, that you were here, that would be awesome. If you'd let us know also how you heard about our services and that you're, you're new here, that would be fantastic. And then Hold on to these. We're going to drop these in the offering buckets when they go by a little bit later. No, no, and offering. you can use these to write down prayer requests or take next steps or sign up for stuff or request information. So it's a connect card. So use that. Also in there are your notes for today's message. These are our small group or our life group notes, but you can use these in your personal study as well. And you can take notes on those. So those are there for your own personal encouragement. So that's that. Oh, okay, and a few things I need to let you, oh wait, there's one more thing in there. There's this card. It's a little oh, okay. postcard. Everybody pull up the postcard and throw your hands in the oh, air okay. like you don't care. Let me see how many people have that, all right. All right, so this is a little survey. This will take you 60 seconds to fill out. It is anonymous, so if you hate the church, what are you doing here anyway? But if you, if you do, you can mark that. Nobody will ever know it was you. Just we're, we're uh, doing a little bit of surveying, yeah, trying to, to figure out how we can make things better. And so you can help us out by filling this out. It will take you 60 seconds and then drop that in the offering buckets when they go by later as well. Got it? 60 seconds. I don't see your pen out, Vicky. On Come on, just get writing. All right, so there's that. And the last thing I need to tell you about, we have something coming up next week, next Thursday evening at 6.30, and it will actually go for 13 Thursdays. It's called Grief Share. And if you've lost a loved one recently, or if, even if not recently, but you find yourself stuck in the grieving process, Grief Share is for you. It is a small group of people who get together and walk through that process in a really healthy, supportive way. And if you need that, you know you need that. So you can get signed up, talk to somebody at one of the next step tables, and we'll get you signed up uh, and plugged into that group. And that will be Thursday evenings uh, ongoing for about 13 weeks. So that's Grief Share. Well, hey, this week we are going to hear from Jen Lewis, and she will be out in just a minute. It's a great message, and I'm loving this parable series. I hope you are too. Welcome, Jen. 
Oh, eight. <laughs> he left. <laughs> she should walk out during this, right? Yes. Okay. Fix. Uh, yeah. Give us, tell us more at 10 seconds. And then count down to zero, please. Yeah, that's good. No, that's fine. It's just a safety shot, I call it. So, uh, one's out of focus, and I'm cutting a one. I came on right, right on time. I'm realizing I need new glasses, and you're and supposed, one. like, there's these little things here, and I'm supposed to stand off to the side. And, anyway, I can't see it. I can't see when I'm supposed to come. Good morning. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I hope you are enjoying the parable series. I am definitely having fun, and I'm excited to, to dig in with you today on the parables we're going to look at. Um, and like Chris said, you've got those notes okay. in your um, program. You can use those as we go. Okay. Write down anything so that kind of up. sparks your down. interest you want to talk about later in your group. Yeah, Some of you, is. I know, may not be in a group, but you could still use the notes for your own personal study or grab your spouse or a good friend who comes to the church as well, and you can talk about them. Our hope is that you don't just come and, and consume and, and hear and eat all this and two. then okay. don't think about it again. Okay, and this so is a slightly wider, and then this is like a that. safety. We, we should never have to cut to this one except for one one. Today. So if you can brought I? your Bibles, I saw some of you bringing old-fashioned paper Bibles today, so you can pull those out. And also remember, we don't have to worry about devices, topping off. We don't worry about, about lyrics on the message. Quite a few so can you bring down two? Um, verses in those passages. So Matthew 21. Make it look like two. one. But before we dig in, I want to give you some like context for what's happening here before Jesus tells these and stories. And three, can you bring it out and bring it to, down to the right a little bit? When I do this, I'm framing. If that makes sense. So just imagine what is farther this way on that camera. So these stories are being told literally days before Jesus yeah. will okay. be crucified. Things are extremely tense. We're at the point in the history where the so like, religious like leaders that. who have pretty much always been opposed to Jesus are at the height of their hatred for him. And the masses love him. I mean, they are just enamored with Dude, him. I think we had it like that Somebody before. Somebody from the dead the other day who had who had um, been dead for four days and was yeah, starting to stink, and he was able to we don't raise want to be too him tight because we want her to not be off the grave, of it and so he time, has caused but... a big stir. And then we're we're getting ready to celebrate Passover, and so what happened? And many of you who are familiar with the story remember this is the time where Jesus comes in riding on a donkey, and it turns into this. A spontaneous parade in the middle of Jerusalem. Crowds and crowds of people are there because they're coming in from across the nation to celebrate Passover, and they swarm to see Jesus. I mean, people line the streets to see this parade with really one attraction, and it's Jesus. And so here we are at this point. Now, the masses love great. him, and they're waving palm branches, pull seven and they're out saying, you know, Hosanna, which, which basically is a declaration of, we're with you, we save us from the oppression of, of the Romans. You know, they were specifically thinking, Jesus is going to save us from what we are experiencing right now in the oppression of the Romans, so they're like in, they're fully in, and they're letting them know. Now, the religious leaders, as much as they hate being under Roman rule— they have kind of figured out how to strategize their lives in such a way that they're still sitting pretty in this um, situation with the Romans really in power. They've kind of gotten themselves um, in a place where they're, they're not the most powerful, but they're still doing okay. And so they're not really as interested as the common folk are in um, changing the status quo. So all of this is unnerving them a bit. I mean, Jesus alone is unnerving them. But then to see the people love him like this and swarm to him like this, they are at their wit's end. Okay? So they, um, they're already angry. And Jesus comes in and he's accepting all this praise and all this stuff as he's coming in riding on the donkey. Then he comes into the temple. And who we normally see as this meek and mild and compassionate Jesus goes off. It says in Matthew 21, 12, Jesus entered the temple courts and he drove out all who were there? buying and selling there. He overturned the tables and the money of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. So Jesus comes in, crowds again, remember, wherever he's going in the city, there's already crowds to begin with, and there are crowds around him constantly. He comes in and he just starts 
throwing things and, 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 and wrecking the tables and pulling out the benches. And I don't know if people were sitting on the benches. I don't know what all was thrown as he was overturning things. But he turned the, mark, the, the temple courts into a shambles. And the reason he did that, you know, we, we're, that's a little bit of a weird thing we see of Jesus. But it was righteous anger. It was not a temper tantrum. It was not irrational. Go. It was completely and utterly righteous anger. Because what had happened was all these people come constantly, but specifically at, at certain times of the year, they come to make sacrifices to the Lord at the temple. Well, don't, no, don't and when it. you were to go to the temple, you had to oftentimes purchase the animals that were going to be sacrificed, especially the people who traveled from afar. They might not have an animal to bring, or it might have been too hard to bring an animal. So they would come expecting to be able to purchase an animal to sacrifice to the Lord so that they would make themselves right with the Lord. And so they were going about this, and in order to buy um, anything within the temple, you had to use the temple currency. But in order to get the temple currency, you had to <laughs> pay an extremely high price in the currency exchange. So the powerful, you know, the religiously powerful were making bukus. I was about ready to say something else. Lots of money <laughs> off of this exchange rate. And then if you know anything basic about economics, you, you know, seven over and whatever, if you come and you're the only one selling things and there's no competition, they raise the prices of the animals. So you have to pay a hefty fee to get your currency exchanged, and then you have to pay exorbitant prices just to buy the animals. So the religious elite were making hand over foot, and especially at this time of year, they were making a ton of money. And it infuriated Jesus. Here these people are coming. They're attempting to get close to God. They, they are pushing through the frustration of this corruption that they see, and they are still going through the motions because Last they want to be right, right with God. Up. And they love him, and they want it to worship him, and they you want to do what's right. Up. And so they go about, oh, and they I have to do off. this, and they have to do the exchange rate, and they have Whoops. to pay high prices. And Jesus is like, oh! He's furious. I hope Jesus made that sense. And you know, when I read those scriptures this time in particular, I was thinking about how this is something that has happened throughout the years. Unfortunately, the abuse of power, and even in religious environments, the abuse of power just happens way too often. And I bet there are people in this room today who have literally experienced the frustration and the doubts and the struggles that come with the fact that somebody uh, kind of above them in the hierarchy of whatever religious experience they've had have hurt them or abused the power in some way. And if that's Can you, you pull I back just want you on to know three and this give me like a, uh, and meek and compassionate and forgiving and loving Jesus is, back? is furious with that. He has no patience for that. And so if you like are that. in a place where, that where way it's you a slate, have it's a safety, that, I can see your feet or head or everything. You, don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on coming to God and pursuing God because this kind of behavior is diametrically... Okay, so if she walks over here, I'm going to have her here. Can you put two... He can loves you. He wants right you there. to be able to come to get a tighter shot on two? Without fear and without suspicion. And you know what? Humans are fallible. I mean, we know this. We see this. We, we see over. it in ourselves. Yeah, like go over. But God is faithful. And he is trustworthy. Are you ready? And even with it, when his people screw up, he's no. still there. And he still is who he says he is. So I want to encourage you. If you are someone who has experienced that kind of thing, if you have experienced... So she walked right into the shot I was expecting. Faith, that's good. He when fixed that two. Kind of corruption and abuse of power has happened, don't give up. Talk to God. All you have, I mean, literally, you don't, you don't need any help to talk to God. You literally just start talking to him. Yeah, and tell him how you feel. Yeah, no, and I then, of course, it. we have people who would Actually, pray with you no, if you want like prayer that. for that. Anyway, okay, I've gotten, I've, let me go back to where we are in this. Um, back on track. So the crowds can't get enough of Jesus. I mean, he's healing people, he's raising people from the dead, he's sticking it to the powerful people, and they love him. And meanwhile, the religious leaders are getting more agitated and more agitated, and they confront Jesus in the temple. And so this is where we're going to pick up with the parables. It says in verse 23 of, of chapter 21 of Matthew, okay. How many slides Jesus have? entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief, chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. 
And who gave you this authority? So basically, they come up to Jesus. You know, of course, he's going to be surrounded by crowds. And they're like, okay, so first of all, you come into town riding on a donkey, getting all this he's praise over and seven. And then you come in here and you kick out all of our people like you Can you frame seven so she's right here? Who do you think you are? You're going to have to move as soon as she walks back. But now, it'll, it'll if you go back now. and you read the story this week, which I encourage you to do, you'll see that what, they're basically trying to trap Jesus. And he's smarter than them because he's God. And so he doesn't fall for the what? trap. And he asks them a question. And they don't answer the question because they're scared of how the crowds will react. Yeah, so on the side of the frame, it'll be like right here. We don't want to well, we don't want to see this side. We want to see this side. And all the people are over here. So it makes more more comfortable to see this side. And we're gonna so that's kind of how we're framing all of them. Parables. So we're going to pick up in Matthew 21, 33. We're going to dissect it. I love it. I'm so excited. I hope you are too. Okay. So it says, listen to another parable. We've got three slides of this. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it. He dug a wine press in it and he built a watchtower. And then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. Now, this would have been a common scenario. This happened all the time. The wealthy were looking for ways to invest their, you know, their wealth. And, and we didn't have the stock market at the time. So they would go in and they would buy land in the country. And they would want Can you to follow on one? I'm sorry, follow on seven. The harvest. But country living was hard at the time. Frame her right here. And nobody really knew who could oh, right. live in the wealthy areas of the city would want to live seven. in the country. And so they would buy the land and then they would run oh, it out on of one. farmers. And the expectation would be that yeah, every so put it like right here. Would, would, keep it, you know, keep her frame uh, like right there. That they would reap that some of the good. percentage of the harvest and then the rest so would say go follow to the renters or on the any of them just follow her on that one that with that sort of framing because we don't care about this part we care about this part because this is in front of her so when, yeah. but this was common scenario and so people were familiar with this it goes on when the yeah. harvest time approached Correct. he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit the tenants seized his servant Servants, they beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Now, collecting rent should have been completely easy. It was the expectation. Oh, you, keep these things on you just go in, you send your servants, down. the servants get the harvest, their percentage that was agreed upon, they bring it home, and all is well. This was normal practice. But we see here that at least six times, the owner sends someone, and not only do they refuse, but they're violent and even kill the servants of the owner. Can you pull out on three? This would have been absurd to the people who were listening to the story. So Jesus goes on, last what of all, he for? sent his son to them. Oh they will respect my son, he said. <laughs> but when the servants saw the son, they said to each other, this is that that. <laughs> come, let's I, I messed him. up, but I got it right. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. So Jesus stops the, Is that the last one? And asks the crowd. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do with those tenants? And they give him the obvious answer. He will bring those wretches to the wretched end, they replied. He will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his okay, share of the crop at harvest time. I mean, this is like a logical answer. Of course, he's going to punish those people who aren't doing what is right. Okay, and then he's going to put people yeah, in there side, who will do and honor the, the agreed upon situation. And then Jesus comes back and brings the spiritual application to the parable. He doesn't always explain things to the crowd, but in this situation, he does. He says, have you never read the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in his eyes. Now, this section of this scripture, actually, he's quoting from the book yes. of Psalms. And this particular section would have been read during the celebration of okay, Passover, that, which was out, happening on, this week. Um, they would have been too? familiar with the and scripture. On, pull out what three. they didn't know, or what they hadn't known at this point, is that he's saying, I'm the stone you're going to trip over. I'm the stone you're going to reject, reject. But I am the stone that holds everything together. Okay, right the foundation for all that there is. Therefore, he says, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. So the vineyard represents the nation of Israel. Now, for those of you who may not know, Israel had been a special nation to God. 
the nation uh, uh, came out of a man named Abraham. He was kind of the forefather of the nation. He wasn't kind of, he was, okay? And he, and, and he had loved God and had put his faith in God. And so God and Abraham had made this agreement that all of his descendants would be God's chosen people. And that God would take care of them and he would provide for them and he would um, also bring the savior of the world out of their people. And he did all that. Can you fix seven? And all through the Old Testament, if you read that, you will see that this is that the Old Testament is the story of the nation of Israel. And all through the Old Testament, Israel is 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 often talked about as God's vineyard. So they would have understood this. And God had set up the nation of Israel to have all that it needed. I mean, God um, say, delivered them out of slavery. He had given them a promised land. He had provided for them in the desert. He had done all the things like the owner had done for the vineyard. The owner had, had put in a wine press, which would have been a luxury at the time, so they wouldn't have to share one in the community. He, he put up um, you know, a fence so that the wild animals would stay out. I mean, this was like a wonderful vineyard. And so God is likening, Jesus is likening the vineyard to the nation of Israel. And God, like the owner of the vineyard, sends them chance after chance after chance, prophet after prophet after priest after prophet, to warn them, to tell them to do what is right. And over and over and over again, the nation of Israel had refused. They had refused to give the owner what was due him. Pull seven out a little bit. They had refused to pull, give God pull. all that he yeah, deserved. Just keep doing that. Keep they on. refused keep to like recognize that. to yeah, whom everything bit. belonged. They had Maybe refused to, to honor God and as back Lord down to in the their hearts. Bit, seven. And now they were refusing his son. The Messiah, keep on, keep on. the one God had promised, I'm on, I'm cut while you're the moving. capstone which everything holds together, okay, keep the, keep the and, the, and the foundation that all things are built upon, and Sorry. they are rejecting him. And Jesus is telling the nation soon. of Israel, specific, specifically the leaders, your time is up. Well, to the, right. Your chances are over. Never mind. The unbelievable, amazing patience of God is done. That's good. Fall on, on one. Okay. It's hard. That's hard. But we also need to remember that these aren't easy things for Jesus to say because he loved these people. Even though they hated him, even though they were figuring out how they were going to destroy him, he loved them. And one of my favorite quotes of Jesus is found in the book of Luke, and it's about this specific issue. He's having another confrontation with a Pharisee, and the Pharisee and him are back and forth, and then he says this. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, One side. you who have yeah. killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, nice how often once. I have longed yeah. to gather your children together. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. He longed for them to get it. He longed for them to wake up and see. And as much as this parable is a difficult one, as much as it you know, shows the wrath of God, if you see the context and you know the history and you consider all the chances that God had given the nation of of Israel, more than the wrath of God, we see the grace of God. And if that parable wasn't hard enough, then he hits him with the next one. He's known to do that. Like it'll just be like sucker punch, sucker punch. Another Matthew, 22. Matthew 22 says Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, "The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son." He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Now, we have to stop and look at the cultural context again, because it helps. Weddings were a huge deal in this culture. The party went on for days, like literally days. And there was much planning involved. And so, really, what would happen is people would get two invitations. They would get an initial invitation saying the wedding's coming. And then when everything's yeah, prepared and the feast probably. is ready to go, they get another invitation. Hold on a second. It was kind of like how we get the save the date magnets that we put on our fridge. Similar, a little bit different. They didn't have the magnet in the fridge, but they would have known. The servants are not springing this on these people. They would have known they were invited. And they're refusing to go to the wedding of the prince. Who refuses to go to a royal wedding? I mean, I don't know about you, but I watched Meghan Markle marry Prince Harry. 
Can you pull I made three? sure of it. I wanted to see the dress. I wanted to three. see everybody else's outfits and hats and the whole deal. He's not even my prince. So I, I mean, he, you know, down like down different down. countries. What? Pull pull down and down I'm not the only one. I mean, if you get invited to, to a bit. royal pull wedding, up. you go. Did he, did he These read, people refused. Did she read, uh, then he sent more servants? It says, then he sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have this prepared for my, servants. I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Yeah, Come to the wedding there. banquet. Again, another chance. He's told them once, he's told them twice, and now he's saying, even though they said no, he's yeah, saying, I Come on! I like, I like butchered the best cow I have, and yeah. we've got a feast that will last for days. I'm ready for you. Come on. The party's going to start. And they say no. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his servant, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. Now again, ridiculous. Ridiculous. First of all, you don't say no. Second of all, you don't kill someone for inviting you to a feast. You think? Okay, the king was enraged, obviously. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to the servants, the wedding banquet is ready. But those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So the king's got everything ready. I mean, he's got food that's going to go to waste. Come on, just bring anybody. I'll take anybody. Good, bad, I don't care who they know, who they don't know. I don't care how they behave. Bring them in. But when the king, then this part gets interesting. When the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. I'm not sure. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Now, I can assume that you're catching some of the spiritual side of this as we go. This part, though, can catch us a little bit off guard. I'll get there, but I'm going to leave you hanging for a minute so you can keep your attention, all right? Let's look at the spiritual application from the very beginning so that we can understand the full, full force here. Those invited to the wedding feast, I'm sure you can figure this out. This is the nation of Israel, specifically the leaders. No. And just like the parable of the tenants, they had refused God over and over again. Now, in this situation, some declined, not because they hated the king. They just declined because they had other things they thought were more important. You know, you know they, they the were worried about their success or about their business. In, in the book when of Luke, when Luke tells the same story, he describes that one of the excuses yeah. is because Especially someone just got married. Fade. And so they put their relationship above the invitation in. so of the king. And the spiritual it, application isn't hard for us to see today. We see this all the time. We see it in ourselves. We see it in other people. The distraction of stuff or the distraction of success or the distraction of relationships cause us to put other things in front of God. It causes us to put honor and honor other things above honoring the one who deserves all of us. And this wasn't just a tendency for Israel. This was also, we see it in us. And then seven, there's those who invited, who, who, who were invited, who were violently opposed to the whole thing. And of course the king punishes them. He kills them. It's absurd that they would, they would kill in response to an invitation. But we see this historically. Pull seven out. We see this in, in the violent reactions we see today. God is offering in, in eternity to, to heaven, and, and it seems absurd that, that people would respond so violently. I mean, throughout history, we saw it with the nation of Israel. They would kill the prophets and the priests for trying to help them <clears throat> grow closer to God. We, we saw it in the Roman Empire, and then in government after government through the years, who have mistreated and persecuted people who are trying to, in, to share the invitation that Jesus that? offers. Oh. And so Jesus oh, says the king gives up, oh. and he invites the good and the bad and anybody off the streets. It doesn't matter if they know the right people. It doesn't matter if they behave the right way or they have a certain status. It's anybody, anybody. Now, to the people listening to Jesus at the time, this would have been, this, the anybody would have been the Gentiles. And so the Gentiles were anybody that was not the nation of Israel. Okay, so the nation of Israel, they were the chosen people. Anybody who was not nation of Israel, they just said, you're a Gentile. You know, no matter what their heritage was. And he was saying, look, 
God's going to go to the Gentiles. Now, remember, those listening have grown up being told that to be right with God, you had to be from the nation of Israel. That to be chosen of God, to be invited, you had to be one of them. So they would have bristled at this. They would not have liked to have heard this. And Jesus is throwing all that away in these stories. He is saying, your elite status has been taken from you, and I'm giving it to somebody else. <clears throat> now, this section of scripture for us is probably quite comforting and encouraging. Most of us in this room are probably Gentiles. And most of us in this room don't consider ourselves somebodies. We just are anybody. And most of us know that we're on the continuum somewhere between good and bad. Depends on the day. And so it's comforting to know that, G that, that, that God is inviting anybody. How that anyone can come. That whether we've been good, whether we've been bad, whether we know the right people, whether we are educated or not. And we you get to the part about the guy without the clothes. <laughs> it's the guy with the, 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 the yeah. I mean, I, I don't get it. You know, you read this at first and you're like, you just, the king the just said anybody. He just invited the you good and the bad outside. off the street. Why in the world are you mad? Why in the world are you upset with this dude who doesn't have the good what? clothes on? Seven out? Never mind. He's probably just Never mind. off the street. Well, yeah, just, yeah, cultural you gotta try context and stay helps so much. Mm -hmm. So, first of I agree, all, it's harder the second time. I told you, weddings were yeah. a big deal. People dressed up for weddings. Yeah, this is my third time hearing this. I mean, still today, we don't dress so, up for anything. Why did you hear we still dress up for weddings Thursday. and funerals. We do it around throughout like. the church. Oh. I mean, I'm, oh, okay. I'm standing yeah. in front of church, and I'm in jeans and a flannel. But if you go to a With wedding, even an outdoor wedding or a no, wedding just, on the beach, just, just I'm not summer. wearing my yoga pants. Yeah. I'm wearing a nice sundress. We dress up because we're honoring the event. We are honoring the people who are getting married. Look, she's looking and the same was true in the day. Now the problem was back then, you basically had two outfits. One you were wearing and one you were washing and hanging up to dry. And so what would happen is, especially for a royal, a royal, royal wedding, you would be given clothes by the king. And so when, we, when the king comes in and he sees that this man does not have clothes, appropriate clothes, that's we can assume that he refused the clothes that were given him. He refused to change. And that's where it's significant. It would have shown an arrogance or like a complete lack of concern for the king. This man wanted the feast, but he didn't care about honoring the son. You know, Jesus invites us to a relationship with Would him. Would you stop sucking down our bandwidth? And when he invites yeah, us dude, to follow him, it includes a feast. It includes, it will include a wedding banquet in heaven, an eternity of joy. The invitation includes grace and mercy and forgiveness for all the things we've done that put us on that continuum from good to bad. His invitation, if we accept it, washes us clean and it includes... She New sorry. clothes. No. Yeah, you see, when Jesus came to earth, he didn't just come down, tick a couple people off so that they would crucify him and then get raised from the dead. He came down and lived 33 years of a perfect life so that his invitation would just not bring, would not just bring grace and mercy and forgiveness, but his invitation would also bring righteousness. And scripture says that when we accept the invitation, when we put on the new clothes, we are in Christ. And when now, when God looks down on us, he no longer no, sees our continuum it. of good to bad. I'm he sees Christ's righteousness. That's yeah, but that's not kids say that yet. Which is unbelievable. We're almost there. But now. sometimes... We just want the feast. Now, this doesn't mean that when we accept the invitation, we're going to be perfect. <laughs> she didn't know she was going to it doesn't she mean that, we're, you know, as soon as I we say, Jesus, feast. come and be the Lord of my life, it doesn't mean that the next day we are expected to be awesome forever. Because God knows we can't. He knew who he invited. He knows he invited the good and the bad and the anybody's. 
He knows we can't do it on our own. If we could do it on our own, we didn't need Jesus to come and live the 33 years of righteousness. But there is a process that we are to go through as we continue to walk in conjunction with the Spirit of God. And it is one where we submit to God. You know, we've been talking over the last three weeks about the kingdom of God. And that the kingdom of God is really wherever the king rules and reigns. And so if you have the kingdom of God in you, you are allowing God to rule and reign in your life. When you put the spiritual clothes on, it is more than just an exception or an in, accepting an invitation to the eternal party. It is an agreement that I will honor the Son with my life. That I will align my life to His will. That I will submit to His rule and reign. Because an unchanged yeah. life shows no respect or honor for the Son. If you accept the invitation Bring it down. and you accept the feast and all the benefits that come with that, but you are not choosing to change. Whoa. Is that the wind? That is the wind. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. ADD. I tell Chris I'm not ADD, ADD, but really I am just as much as he is. Uh, if you, if you are all about church, and you are all about the experience of church or the knowing that you, you can get into heaven. But you are not willing to make changes in your life when it's inconvenient for you, when it's hard for you, when you know that the right thing to do is another way and you are refusing. Can you follow on seven? This parable has got to disturb you. And I believe that it was told to disturb you. And not because he wants you to be disturbed. Not because he wants you to walk around afraid if you're invited and you're on the guest list. That's not his point. Okay, his point is to on. unsettle us on out of our complacency. On. Out of our self-centeredness. What? What did I do? Because he I don't is due all honor. I must not have been on where I thought he I was He is be. due all that we have in our lives. I was on seven, I thought I was on one. This parable... <laughs> Every time we read it, I hope we read oh, it so a not. thousand more times in our life. And I hope every time we read it, it doesn't produce fear in us, Can you follow but it produces seven? a reverent moment of God. If she goes that way, follow on seven. Am I okay with you? Are we okay? About, did you say it? Yeah. Am I just all way? about the benefits and not about honoring you? What is this walk with you about? Is the Matthew crazy? Henry's commentary helps us to understand this concept. It says, if the gospel be the wedding feast, then the wedding garment is, is a frame of heart and a course of life agreeable to the gospel. It's a frame of heart. It's, it's the condition of your heart. You know, Myron talked last week about how if your heart is soft okay. the last and it melts to the will of God, or if it just gets harder and it's harder. Killing it. <laughs> You cannot earn your way into the kingdom, okay? So don't hear me say that you've got to, you know, it's, it's you working out the righteousness by yourself to make this happen. You are putting on the clothes every day. And yes, in a sense, you are in your agreement to submit to him, putting on the clothes. It is his spirit working it out in you. But if there is no evidence of life change, you need to ask yourself, Am I open to his rule and reign in my life? Really? Now this part of the parable is harsh, but it's Jesus' word. And so we have to wrestle with it. Now, remember the question that the Pharisees asked Jesus at the beginning of all this that caused this whole chain of stories. They said, who do you think you are? And he is telling them. He's telling them that they are the renters and they are the farmers and they are the, uh, the guests. And he is due honor. And he is due to be treated as so the master and the king. Um, because we take the same But I really think we, we can turn the question around and ask ourselves, and who do we second. think we are? You, you want it up? And we, we take the sermon. Everything um, we see, hear, touch, taste. We put it on the YouTube channel. Is his to begin there's, with. There's a YouTube channel. This life that we have. 
is a gift from him to begin with. The mental capacity for you to even, for me to even use these words to talk about theological concepts is his to begin with. Anything we earn, anything we think we deserve, anything we create is not of us. It's because he gave us the mind and the body and the resources to do what we do. We are mere dust with a little bit of water sprinkled in. Pan of the right on something. And then his divine spark in us. We fix one. He didn't have to create us. He didn't have to think of us, let alone then save us for eternity to have a relationship with him and have a wedding feast and have eternal joy with him. We don't deserve any of it. Yeah, I saw it. I was... And I think the farmers and the, and the guests forgot who they were compared to the master and compared to the king. And we get so consumed in our lives and we get so caught up in who we are and what, our, what we look like and all that. We forget. We are nothing. And then wow, when we get to that place where we remember that we are mere dust. What is so awesome about that is that then we get a picture of how amazing and great his love is for us. Because we don't deserve it. But do you know who he says we are? He says that we are loved, that we are valued, that we are wanted, that we are invited, that we are worth dying for. And we know in the depths of our hearts that we are mere peasants and mere bandits getting the greatest gift ever to be offered. You can hand down a little bit on seven. I'm sorry. And if you could just imagine that you are the only person in this room right now. He died for you. He loves you. you. He invited you. He says that you are worthy of my son. And we forget. Let us not forget. On seven? What? Let us honor the one who deserves it all. Now there are some of you here who are like, yes, I I think and I'm you in. You just to try and keep her, you want to monitor her. But I don't know that I've ever really put Make sure that wherever place. she is, she's in frame. Like on two, We're gonna she's play. not in frame. And all you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I want your will and reign. I want right. you to be in my life. Much, I want to honor you still, yeah. the way you, you deserve. Want, you want to have her be in frame as much as possible. You just have to agree. Okay, follow along. And then every day, you say, okay, God, help align my will to yours. Make me more like you so that I can honor you the way you deserve. Let's pray. All right. Father, you are so amazing that you love us. Who's leading that? And that you don't begrudgingly give us an invitation because we could probably think that by this scripture. But other scripture says, for the joy uh, set before you, you endured the uh, cross so that you could be with us forever. Probably didn't do that before. Yeah. Lord, thank you for this gift, I'm for this love. I'm still not sure why we don't do it for so us. No matter what we've done, no matter who we are, no matter what our yeah. struggles are, that you easy. love there's us. A, there's a video that we play there. So. Lord, I pray for those right now in this room who want to follow you. But for the first time, they're realizing they haven't heard that. I pray, Father God, that you right so now, what are you your spirit to? will come and fill them. Nothing. This, so this is the... Um, them with this your is our comm units. Yeah, so who, what are you listening to? So I was listening to... Lord, that you would like, draw If them. the person at the board needs something, or at like the lighting board, or if like... That you would put your uh, right on them. So is front of house and monitors on comms? Just front of house. And Father, I pray for What's the up, rest man? of us, that as we have walked in ways oh. that... It may be gotten off track or have neglected to think <laughs> about like really who you are you and what you deserve. I pray, Father God, that you would take those things in our heart that need to be scraped away and that you would do it. That you cleanse us anew, fill us anew with your spirit. Have your way and be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go back. Yep, hit the bumper. Um, sorry. You stop hitting the black one. My goodness. Woo, sorry. It's so good. That was, okay, one, we're gonna take one, two, Okay, see what I'm talking about?
So you have this on your... Remember, these spaghetti are awesome. Yeah, I have it on the key area. I know. We're not doing, Chris, we're not doing Chris spaghetti's name playing in right Correct. Well, all right, we're going to prepare to receive our offering. So, ushers, if you all would take your place. Uh, everyone else, uh, connect card, please. And if you could do the survey for us, that would be fantastic if you haven't done it already. Uh, as far as the offering is concerned, there's several ways you can give. You can give in the bucket. Just throw, uh, you know, there's an envelope in your program, and you can throw that in the in the bucket. Uh, you can give text to give, and that information will be on the screen. You can use the app to give. You can get online and set that up there. Uh, I just want to say thank you for partnering with us. For, for all of you who, who partner about that in ministry with this church, this is your church home, and you're all about helping people find and follow God and serving this community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, two weeks ago we launched Life Groups. Uh, we kind of retooled our groups the way we're doing groups. We have the program notes and all of that. And, um, and the groups have been amazing. Uh, one of the things that I've experienced over my long journey with the Lord is that life change really does happen when you get into small groups with people. And we're seeing that happen throughout the church. There's hundreds and hundreds of people's lives that are being transformed. And part of what makes that possible is your giving. So thank you for that. Uh, and, and keep going. And if you're sitting there going, well, that's great, Chris, but I'm not in a, a life group, it's not too late. Stop out at the next step tables on your way out. And we'll get you set up. We'll get you uh, connected with somebody who can get you signed up and into a group. You don't want to miss that experience. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. All right, let me pray for our offering. And as long as the building holds together, we'll win it together. All right. Lord, thank you so much for uh, providing for our needs. God, even when it looks like we don't know how it's all going to come together. You always, you always provide. You always make it to come together. And we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. And I just thank you for the faithfulness of this congregation in serving you uh, and following you and, and supporting your ministry in this world, Lord. And so as we give, would you bless us? And Lord, may we be a blessing to you in our faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Video. Go ahead and pass the buckets to the end of the row. There'll be somebody on the other side again. Follow them to the right. Okay. Do what you do. Video. Video. Hey, if you did this time. That's, that's, that's good. Okay. Um, so we're going to start on camera. Matt's leading. We're going to start on camera. Sorry, Maggie's, Maggie's leading. Put oh. two on Maggie. Wait, two. Yeah. Here's up. Maggie. Find something for seven. Can you get a second hand? Yeah, to look back, there's wonderful things. Can we find the, uh, can you get a guitar, can you get a guitar player lined up on seven? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Can you get it in the general area? And then we need a, uh, yeah, it's good. And you're out of focus on the magnet. It's just getting worse. Yeah, it's 10 seconds left. Hey, just to a second one. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Well, if you guys will stand again, we're going to sing one more song. We introduced the song last week, and you know, lately I've just really felt and come across people who are really in a valley, and they're just struggling with some difficult times, and I'm just reminded, and I'm hoping to remind you that we can choose to praise God in our storms, because He's always working out for our good, so we know that He's always taking care of it. But if we choose to praise Him in our storm and just let Him lead us through the valley, man, we get to just praise Him and serve Him. And that's what this song is about, so I want you to sing it with me and just really mean it, just lift it up to Him. Let Him be the God that He is. Okay, I'm going to leave seven on Maggie and move two to Barry. Wait, put, um, put seven on, now put seven back on that guitar. Yes, I will lift you up. And now 
There's yep. prayer teams in the back. Yep. What's normally well, like the right um, handicapped area, well, seating that. area. If you go back that way, you'll find people who would love to pray with you. I also just kind of had a sense when I was writing this that if there might be some people who need prayer because you've had um, experiences with that abuse of power um, in your church experience. If you would like prayer, um, people would love to pray with you. Um, and then if you are new with us, we would love to meet you back at the next step tables. We'd love to meet you. If you prayed for the first time to to allow God to rule and reign in your life, um, if you did not check that off on your Connect card, but you would like resources from us, you can also stop at the Next Step table and we will make sure that you get them. Okay? Let me pray for us and then we'll go. Father, thank you that we get to call you Father. Can you frame seven? Thank you for this life that you've given us. Lord, help us this week to remember that you are due yeah, all down. honor, all praise, good. Stop right there. and all glory. Well, what did I just May we live our lives to reflect that. In Jesus' name. Okay. Oh, they should be they should be have a good week. We'll see you next away, week. So they should have saw that. Okay, good. There you go. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, we tried to be slick in the last little bit there, and we screwed up. It's all right. Overall, we did pretty good. Great job, guys.